big thanks to MPB for sponsoring this week's video. For the last two weeks, I've been using the Pen F exclusively. It's one of my all-time favorite Micro Four Thirds cameras. And I actually wonder, in terms of photography, if the best Micro Four Thirds camera is portable, stylish, and has incredible image quality, is the Pen F the best Micro Four Thirds camera ever made? Let's find out. The Pen F has so many great features. We do have a fully Filippi screen. We do have an EVF, which I've used a heck of a lot this week because it's been very, very bright. We have five axis stabilization. We have a 20 megapixel more modern Micro Four Thirds sensor. And we even have cool features like live composite mode and also time-lapse. Another great feature of the Pen F is we do have customizable photo presets. We have the shadows and the highlights that we can dial in and we can manipulate the colors as well. My favorite, which you might gather from this video is my custom monochrome which is more or less stock but with just a little bit of added contrast i think a lot of cameras have different photo filters but more often than not it is a gimmick but with the pen f i do think you can get some really great results straight from camera Let's take a little trip down memory lane. I bought the Pen F originally in October 2016. It was my very first Micro Four Thirds camera and it was the camera that actually sparked this channel. So I owe the Pen F a heck of a lot. Also, I spoke really slowly back then. Your shadows and your highlights. So if you press this dial here, you can bump the shadows or the highlights. I did, however, sell the Pen F eventually. I was just in sort of a time in my business where I needed something a bit more video centric and this is a terrible video camera. Fantastic for photos, terrible for videos. So I did sell it and ended up buying the GH5. The GH5 changed my life and made this channel a hell of a lot better, but I've always missed having the Pen F and I really do regret selling it. And I'm very sorry to say that this is not a bargain camera, even in 2023. They've become kind of a cult classic because they have been discontinued now, unfortunately, by Olympus. I bought it for like 1,500 quid in 2016, and they still go for maybe seven to 800 pounds even now. But if you do look around, you can definitely find bargains. There is a lot to love about the Pen F. I actually think it's probably one of the prettiest cameras ever made. I love all of the tactile buttons and everything just feels very premium. All the buttons are made of metal and I absolutely love that we have a physical exposure compensation dial, particularly when you're out and about shooting street photography or you're shooting in monochrome in particular, which I have done a lot this week. Being able to quickly change the exposure compensation, even when I've got my eye to the camera, has been really, really nice. I also like like a lot of Olympus cameras, that when you press the shutter, it feels substantial and it feels nice. It's just a creatively inspiring piece of hardware, in my opinion. I pick it up, it makes me smile. It makes me want to document more mundane moments of my life because I think the monochrome filter makes everything look lovely. And it just makes me very happy when I use the camera. Sometimes when we're talking about tools, you have to take specs into consideration, of course, but there is something intangible about certain cameras, I think. Something that is more of an emotional connection. That sounds very wishy-washy when I'm standing by it. The Pen F makes me feel creative. Another great hardware feature is the dial on the front. This is where we can quickly change the photo presets. I shoot RAW and JPEG and pretty much just use the custom monochrome in this. But if you do want to choose selective color or different filters, you do have the option to assign them on the front dial, which is really nice. If I was being really nitpicky, I would say it's slightly annoying that the on and off button is on the left because when I'm out shooting street photography, I try to keep everything as one handed as possible. And most cameras, it's on the right hand side so I can keep my strap on my wrist, turn it on, take a photo, turn it off and put it back down. Whereas this does need two hands to operate. Super tiny, but it is something that I have noticed this week. So there is a lot to love about this camera, but there are a few things where it is lacking. I think the autofocus is quite bad, even for an average Micro Four Thirds camera. There was a moment this week where I was trying to take a picture of the hotel's cat and I missed it. And it's like this geriatric little cat that was just walking really slowly towards me and I couldn't get the camera to focus in time. 
I got the grass perfectly in focus behind it. So this is not going to be great for sports and action and things, but I don't think that's who it's aimed at anyway. It's just to set your expectations if you do pick one up. I have found the autofocus perfectly usable for travel photography, everyday documentation, and just wandering around with a camera. It's absolutely fine. And as I have alluded to in this video, the video features of the Pen F are very lacking. The IBIS is great for photography, but it does cause quite a bit of wobble and jello in the video. And it's just not the best video camera in the world. There's no audio input. So this is definitely a photo centric camera and that's fine. It can be very, very good at one thing and doesn't have to be good at everything. I think it's a shame actually that we're probably not going to get a Mark II because it's so close to being the perfect camera in my opinion. I think if it had weather sealing, it would tick the boxes for a hell of a lot of people, maybe for landscape photographers, hikers, and, and you know more tricky situations when you are doing street photography. I think if it did have slightly better video features, it would be something that you could genuinely vlog and use for all occasions rather than just photography. And also at 430 grams, it is not the lightest camera in the world, but the build quality more than makes up for it. It's so, so close to being perfect. As you know, on this channel, I'm not the biggest fan of the Olympus menus. I just find that I tend to get lost within them, but there is the quick menu that you can use and there's a heck of a lot of custom function buttons that you can assign as well. So even if you're not the biggest fan of Olympus menus, I know some people much prefer them over other brands, you can use the function buttons and set everything up exactly how you need. To the question I asked at the beginning of this video, is the Pen F the perfect Micro Four Thirds camera for photography? I think it's pretty damn close, to be honest. I think it's a classic and it's a shame that we're probably not gonna get a new one. I think if you do find one at a good price, you should absolutely jump at it. If you are looking for a bargain, definitely check out MPB, the sponsor of today's video. They are the world's biggest online platform for buying, selling and trading your camera equipment. You can check the condition of the item and that will drive the price down. So if you are looking to get a Pen F on a little bit of a budget, you could get one that's maybe in a good condition rather than excellent and you're still gonna get a great camera for a better price. I use MPB a lot personally, and I have a lot of items on my wish list, so you can set up email alerts. If you're looking for one specific product at a specific price, you can set up your email alerts and get alerted to whenever something is in stock again. And every photograph on the website is of the specific camera that you're going to receive, so you can check out the condition of all the items before you buy. They're an international company. I've got links to MPB in the US, the EU, and the UK. So if you are on the hunt for a bargain or a Pen F or something else, definitely make sure to check them out below. So I think the Pen F is an absolute classic. And if you can find one at a good price, jump at it and don't be an idiot and sell it like I did. Watch this video next where I go through all of my top time-lapse tips and show you how to rock your time-lapses with any camera that you own.